down memory lane of bygone years, when grandmother was a little girl spinning dreams of wonder and romance, two old men trudged the rope walk to and fro in their little back street workshop at Xenia, Ohio, spinning golden threads into endless yarns for rope and twine. Hooven and Allison. Two master rope makers were pioneers of the cordage industry in the Middle West during Civil War days. With faith in the future of industrial progress by Americans, with Americans, and for Americans. The pioneers erected this structure in 1884 to accommodate the increasing demand for quality cordage. American industry and agriculture were marching on. New methods and new processes were being developed. Scientific research and processing at an early date became a definite function in the Hooven and Allison organization and is responsible for its growth. Stretched out far below lie the mammoth mills of Xenia's leading industry, representing an investment of millions of dollars where the great drone of hundreds of busy spinners echo as a tribute to the pioneer's ideal, quality cordage, plants covering 45 acres and manufacturing millions of pounds of products annually, a source of tax income for state and federal governments. Mills giving employment to hundreds of free American workers enjoying the American standard of living. Suppose we drop in to meet them. We present the Hooven and Allison personnel. Happy, contented employees in good environment safeguard the processing of high quality cordage. Plans to promote the comfort and welfare of the employees have been inaugurated. Workers participate in sports and other forms of amusement. Modern home by the company and life insurance protection for the workers. Health, too, is of prime importance. The clinic is under the constant supervision of a staff of physicians. Spence has been spared in providing modern medical service for employees and their families. Scientific processing of cordage to Hooven and Allison standards requires scientific control. Samples of raw material are tested in the laboratory before being permitted to enter the fabrication of cordage. Yarns, strands, twine, rope and cables are tested for yardage, strength, durability, water resistance and insect proofing. Testing units at the point of production, checking the quality of work of the machines. Systematic methods of checking production are essential, but essential to production is wide distribution. Hooven and Allison at Kansas City. Hooven and Allison at Omaha. Hooven and Allison at Minneapolis, scattered across America's great agricultural areas. Where seas of golden grain await the call of the reaper. As the reaper passes over the field, the grain is cut and bound into sheaves with binder twine. h and star brain spun to give perfect service under difficult binding conditions. The use of faulty binder twine during the harvest means a direct loss to the farmer. Broken twine means broken sheaves, and broken sheaves means double tiresome labor and the slowing up of the harvest. The arch enemy, millions of insects lurk in the harvest field, and the poor quality binder twine has little chance against the armies of insects. Star brand is thoroughly treated against attack by testing the insect resistiveness of binder twine with actual grasshoppers and crickets.
Days later, the twine remains untouched. Insect resisting treatment at no additional cost. Star twine must contain the right amount of insect resisting fluid. In addition to being insect resisting, it is tough. Weatherproof and made from a specially selected raw material known as sisal. From the cream of the crop in far off Yucatan, Mexico, Africa, and Java comes sisal fiber. Sisal fiber is obtained from the leaves of a cactus like plant similar to the century plant. It grows in semi arid country in rocky soil. The plant matures in five years, after which the fiber-producing leaves are cut away. The spine at the leaf end is cut off, and the leaves bundled for removal to the cleaning machine. A machine called Raspador separates the fiber from the pulp, after which it is hung on racks to dry. Later, it is packed in bales, weighing 400 pounds, for shipment. After traveling thousands of miles over land and sea, the sisal bales finally reach the Hooven and Allison fiber warehouses. These employees are expert judges of fiber quality. Samples are taken from the bales for testing and sent to the laboratory. Here a quality check is made. The sisal begins its long journey through the mill down through the deep canyons of pile after pile of bale fiber it travels. Bales, bales, bale after bale, rising from floor to roof, high above our heads. Other types of fiber are also stored, awaiting fabrication into different kinds of cordage. Fiber from China, India, Africa, New Zealand, the Philippines, and Java, from the far corners of the world, off the beaten paths of civilization. The first step of the mechanical processing begins in this preparation section of the mill. Multiple combing and drawing operations are necessary in the preparation of the fiber before it is spun into binder twine. The operators examine the raw fiber more thoroughly. The bales are made up of hanks, or small bundles of fiber. Hank is composed of fine thread-like tough fibers. The fibers must be combed, cleaned, softened and straightened in machines called breakers, spreaders, drawing frames, and regulators. 